So yeah, I want to talk to you about patterns for performance, because I guess we've already seen some talks today which have been talking about performance, and as a React developer, that is a key thing that a lot of us are always, I guess, important to us, important to our users. So that's why I want to share this with you today. As I do work for AG Grid, there's going to be some grids featured in this uh, talk. So can you see which of these grids is better? We've got the top one where you're resizing and it's, you know, jumping along, or you've got the bottom one where you've got this smooth resizing. So I think it's, it's obvious which ones our users would want to use and which you would want to work with. And so this is something we're going to dive into and say how we solved this issue. So as you already know, I work at AG Grid, and our mission is to create the best JavaScript or React data table in the world. So you know, we've got a free version, we've got enterprise versions. Um, so do come and find out more about this, um, because we think it's a brilliant product, and it's getting better, and we are really heavily investing in our React component. So we hope you can try it out. But that's enough about AG Grid. You want to know about performance. So to, to I guess, give us a story for this talk, we want to have this reconstruction, where a user has started using AG Grid, um, very old version, which doesn't have this issue anymore. Um, and they said, oh, you know, when I use this custom component, the grid does this really slow resizing. So we think, oh, OK. But they also say, well, it's when they're using a custom cell renderer. So just to give you, I guess, the background you need, custom cell renderers are a way for you as, your, as a React developer to give our grid a functional component or a class component and say, render this within every cell. So here we've got a weather table where instead of numbers, you've got pictograms based on how many days of sunshine. So, and that would be your own React component. So in the use case we've got, they're displaying a total. So they might have a renderer like this, where in the body of their renderer, they've got some really complex um, logic, which is really slow, and then they're just returning a value. I mean, this isn't going to be slow, but just go with me, and uh, hopefully it will demonstrate what we're trying to show here. And then to use this cell renderer, they pass it to the grid in this way. They'll define it on their column saying, well, actually render this with my renderer and pass it to the AG Grid component. So we'll come back to this stage, and we think, OK, how are we going to resolve this issue? Because we haven't noticed it yet. If we want to diagnose what, why it's slow, we've, we need to just take a step back and think, well, in the normal case, when it works fast, you know, how does the grid behave in that situation? So we take a benchmark. This is the standard grid, no cell renderers, you know, and it resizes really smoothly. We're going to use the React DevTools uh, profiler, and we'll profile it, and we get something like this. So while we're, we're resizing the column, we've got 254 renders going on. So you know that is a lot of renders, but they're really fast renders. So that's why you're not really seeing any you know, slowdown with, despite the fact that there's that many renders. So it's not always more renders is bad, it's also, well, how slow are those renders? Because React is fast. React can render a lot of times without your user and your application slowing down. So now let's go back to the user's case where that, they do have this issue. And we'll do the same thing. See, now we've got less renders, but each of these renders, instead of being less than a millisecond, are now, what does it say, 28.9 milliseconds to render that total renderer. And each one of these is now blocking the main thread. So React, in this same time period where we're pulling the icon to resize, is only able to render it 10 times. And so that's what's giving us this you know, jump, 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 because the browser isn't able to repaint enough times to keep up with it. So why is it slow? Well, the cell component, it re-renders many times. And we saw that even without our custom renderer, that was still rendering a lot, but it was rendering fast. You introduce this total renderer, which is a child, so that's also being rendered a lot. But then it has an expensive render, which is now blocking the main thread. And so instead of all the fast renders, we've now got some slow ones, which is causing this behavior. So why is it rendering so much? Well, so in the initial implementation, 
we had this. So the cell component had a state for the width. And so it was listening to this callback from our controller saying whenever the width changed, so when it's being dragged, it would call set width and set the state, and then React would re-render. So it's the standard kind of pattern of state re-render. And I think the talk two times before was you know, also running into kind of these issues of how do we escape this pattern. Simple solution, memo. You know, memo lets us skip re-rendering the child component. So we can update our code like this. So instead of passing the value renderer directly in, we wrap it in memo, pass it to the cell renderer, and that takes us back to you know, the fast rendering. Now, if I stop there, that would be a very short talk, and I'm sure nothing new. But can we do better than memo? So let's profile it again, but now with the Chrome DevTools. So it seems like it's working fine, but if we take a closer look, when we're resizing, we'll see something like this. So there's lots and lots of these different actions where it's re-rendering as we're changing the side. And in total, it's about 81 milliseconds of scripting. And if we zoom in to each one of those spikes, what we can see is we've got AG grid code followed by some React code. And this is using the dev mode to give us slightly nicer, I guess, names so we can see what React is doing. But what you can see is we've got AG Grid doing something, it's painting, and then we've got React doing something. So this is AG Grid says this is what the width should be, and then we tell React, and then React takes that, re-renders, and does all this extra work. So Memo is still going to be running comparison code, and the cell comp is still rendering. So even though we've stopped the child component re-rendering, which was the blocker, we're still actually doing potentially more work than we need to do. What if we don't re-render at all? So, and this is where it takes sometimes to look at our application code and think, well, what is actually changing here? Because if we look at this line of code, the only thing that the width is changing is the style property. So we're not actually making any structural changes to the DOM. So like, when we see this, we think, well, actually, maybe I don't need this in a state um, hook. Maybe I can actually do this myself. I can access the DOM, and I can change the style property. So how do we get the reference to the div? Well, you, know, you can use a ref, and you can set it on the ref, and, that's, and we know that that's going to give us a reference to that DOM element, which we are then able to interact with. So then within our callback, we can use this effect to set up it on a net, and we directly change the DOM style. So we get the cell ref, get the current one, and then for that style property, we're now changing the width. And this is going to have exactly the same impact on our um, component as what React would eventually do after it had you know, rendered, worked out what had changed, and produced the new output. So we can just skip all of that and say, well, actually, the only thing which is changing is this. I'm going to surgically change it myself. And now if we reprofile it again with this change, we're down to 31 milliseconds. So it's a massive drop because we've just said, well, I know what I'm doing. Um, let me do it myself. Use the browser you know, reference in the way that we, we can do. So now when you're resizing, we've just got AG grid code and the browser is repainting. So I think this is something which we do need to remember we're working in React, but we're also working in the browser. And the browser have, has tools and ways for us to update things that we can use to good effect. And so this is like one example of where we can do that. And so we've gone from this with React Memo into the direct style update, um, which is giving us a much better uh, user experience. And also, something to note here is that it's not only a better user experience um, if the user has remembered to use memo, this is now also going to work if the user hasn't, you know, the developer hasn't wrapped their component in memo. So we've uh, enabled our grid to be much more robust to however it's being configured. And that's something which is important because even if developers are making, you know, suboptimal choices as an application library, we want to try and give them the best opportunity for our product still to work you know, as fast as it can do. But we need to be careful. The code which we've shown so far actually has a pretty big bug. 
I don't know if anyone has any idea what that might be, but we'll, we'll see this. So we made these changes, but then suddenly the columns start flickering into place. So you load up your grid, and you can see all of them are overlined over the first one. So what's happening now is that we're using an effect. And an effect is run asynchronously after the browser has painted. So we, what we've got here is React is rendering all our columns, painting them to the browser, and then it's running the effect, which is then coming in and changing the style directly, which is why we got columns all in one place, and then suddenly they jump. So we, we don't want this, because this is even worse. So how can we set this initial width then? Because you can't just put it in a state and then have you know, your direct style manipulation, because the next time it renders, whatever was in the state value is going to override what you've done. So you're going to have to work out, you know, well, which one should I be reading and what's the source of truth? But we've got these two alternative approaches. Um, so the first is use layout effect, and then a use ref as a callback. So I love this. When I took this snapshot from the uh, docs, it was like, oh, OK. So there's this pitfall. Use layout effect can hurt performance. But we're actually using it to improve the performance of our application. So you've got to kind of dig into, well, why could this hurt performance? But why, in this use case, is it actually helping us to have a better you know, performance in our app? And so the key difference here is that use layout effect it's like use effect, but it fires before the browser repaints the screen, and it's synchronous. So any code you put in a use layout effect is going to block um, the browser painting. So this is why it can be a pitfall. So if you do have some expensive code you know, put in there, it's going to delay the time that the browser gets to repaint. I don't know if I'm making that sense. Which is why most of the time it says you, you know, use an effect because the side effects, you know, they might be heavy. And so, yeah, you want the browser to, to paint, and then you run those. You don't want to have to block that painting. But so we make this simple change. We swap use effect for use layout effect. We don't have to change anything else. And now this code is running synchronously. So the width is applied before um, the column is rendered, so we don't get this jump. So this fixes it. So that's a, you know, a viable solution for it. But there's some down, potential downsides, and that's you know, the use layout effect. It's going to be run no matter whether this cell is mounted in the DOM or not. So it could be conditionally rendered. But the logic in this use layout effect, because it's dependent on the component itself, if I go back, you see it's got this you know, the empty dependency array. So whenever this component is first rendered, this code is going to run. So if there is something in there you know, that's slightly expensive, it's going to be run every single time. And also, it runs twice in strict mode, which can then mean you have to take other, other actions. And there's a good blog post here from Dominic about using avoiding effects with callback refs. And so this is then a pattern which I think is an even better approach to solving this problem. So we're all probably very used to having use ref in our code, where you define the ref, and then you pass it to the development, and then you know that that ref is going to be defined. But if we inspect the type of that closely, there's also a callback. So we can actually give this a function. So we define a ref as usual, because we still want to be able to reference our, our div um, element for the cell. But then we define a callback. So we're going to say set ref. And this callback re will receive a reference to the div um, or null. And you pass that callback to the ref. And the nice thing about this is that this callback is only going to get run when this specific div element is mounted. So if things are conditionally rendered, this, the code that you set up in your callback for this reference is only going to run when the div is actually mounted. And then it, you can get null, because React will call this again when that element is unmounted. Now, it's crucial that you, use, you wrap this in a use callback, because if you don't, then on every render, this um, React will recall it with a new ref. So the callback there is, is essential. So then if we come back and update our code um, for our cell reference, it will look something like this. We define our reference, and we set up this callback. 
And now within this callback, we do the same code where we listen to our cell controller for the width changes and apply the style directly. And this now work, runs synchronously to start with and then also enables us to update the width dynamically um, or directly without causing any renders. So I think I ran through these. You call it ref with the elements be mounted. It's going to be called again when it's unmounted. Runs synchronously, which is key for us, and it only runs once. Um, so you can avoid some of the strict mode logic if you need to. So the final result is no matter what the user passes in or the developer passes in, we are now guarded against slow renders because we don't need to re-render when we're just changing the width of this column. So we've got two renders here uh, instead of 254, which I think is a pretty big win. But some takeaways as I finish here. So React is fast. You know, you don't have to prematurely optimize um, everything. So do wait until you have a performance issue before you start adding this complexity into your app. As you saw, Memo is likely good enough, but with AG Grid, we wanted to push it to the limit. We wanted to ensure that you know, no matter how much data users put into our grid, we wanted to make sure the grid still performed. Because after all, that's why people are choosing to use AG Grid. So we need to make it as fast as we could. And taking direct control, it can lead to these performance gains. But make sure you use the right tool um, as we looked at the different approaches to use the reference um, so that you don't end up introducing new bugs into your code. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that's helpful.